Are you stuck at home in lockdown? Yeah, I know, we all are. Don't worry, we've got you covered because it's time once again for Live at Night with Pete Ferrero. Don't you want to be like, I don't give a shit. Tom, send me your address. I'll be happy to send you a copy. Oh, excellent, yeah. That's awesome, okay. And so, uh, and I and I paid for it, so that's just lovely. No. <laughs> I'm on, okay, what's that? I'm Live at Night. Where whatever happens, happens. Now along with his special guests, here's your host, Pete Ferrero. So hey, everybody, we're live here tonight, and I've got Claire Robinson back with us, and also um, Dom Civilli, and we're going to guide you guys through um, what you should be watching, just some suggestions. It's not, you don't have to watch these shows, (laughs) but just some suggestions, uh, what's binging, some old movies, maybe, uh, all that kind of fun stuff. So, but before we get into that, I want to talk to Claire. You've been dealing with this restaurant uh, crisis head on. Yes. So talk to me a little bit about what's going on on your end and what you're, what you're getting from uh, restaurant owners and all that kind of stuff. Uh, well, um, besides a lot of crying, big men <laughs> crying, it's yeah. brutal. It's really brutal. Um, you know, the, the biggest issue I think everybody's been trying to fight is the insurance situation because most clauses um, ha- are have act of God or act of war written in, which yeah. means if something happens and you're forced to shut down, insurance will cover the rent and all the costs and you can manage to come back. This a pandemic does not fall under either of those. So who knows where we'll get with that right now? It's a bleak outlook um but there's some really interesting uh pilot programs that are being started to maybe see if we can come up with some sort of a way to show how we can operate yeah. uh, keeping risks minimal and get the government to fund these programs once they're proven uh, most of them are starting immediately as a matter of fact one started in dc today it's my favorite one it's called the power of 10 initiative dot org you can go check it out yeah and like the number um initiative.org it's really cool i think it's fascinating to see um how some chefs have like come together and chefs that maybe didn't always talk are starting to right and everybody's trying to figure this out and this is i mean we're losing the largest payroll in the united states right now it's by far losing the largest payroll so it's the biggest economic crisis that will, you know, will I think show its ugly head in, you know, when we even come out of this whole shelter in place, you will yeah. notice your favorite restaurant's gone. So let's hope that's not the case and figure out a way to get them, some of them back. All, not all of them will come back. That's already a guarantee. If we could just accept that, then maybe we can build from there. Are you hearing from? Uh, are you hearing from other places like some of the bigger names? Like there, there's a chance that the restaurant doesn't return. Yes, I'm absolutely. I can guarantee you, some of your favorite restaurants from some very big names are not coming back. Yeah. Unless there's some, you know, I would have never thought this would have happened. So I don't want to, no. you know, never say never, especially now. Um, I think that we're gonna find that that it's too costly right now with until there's some sort of rent abatement or some sort of something is happens these people even if they've closed the restaurants what is what you have to understand is they still are sitting on a lease they right. still have unemployment in uh, taxes to pay they have payroll taxes to pay for anybody they did keep on if they're trying to do take takeout and delivery takeout and delivery is not enough to sustain any restaurant unless you were already just like a takeout and delivery kind of place like pizza shops sandwich totally shops, they're fine but like a real like a restaurant that you walk in and sit down they're making money on booze and they can't do that right now so it's there, there's no way they can survive. So the reason I like Power of 10 is they're shutting the restaurant down and providing a thousand meals to the local community. Um, the one thing I also learned from Food Bank in New York, where I'm based, um, they are struggling to feed, they normally feed like 300,000 elderly weekly, and they can't even do that right now because they don't have volunteers that are healthy. They don't have enough staff to pack the food. 
So there's a, there's a hole and then you've got restaurants that actually have the capability of doing it, but they can't do that and keep open. So maybe this, that's what this is, is it's a government pilot program to maybe say, hey, listen, if we can give you uh, 10 grand to keep open, keep 10 employees off of unemployment and get, the, and, and get a thousand meals fed to the first responders, then we can keep that restaurant operating. It also deems the restaurant an emergency shelter and play like an emergency like yeah. stop. So they then get covered and get the the you know uh, mortgage and uh, mortgage break for the landlord, and they don't have to pay their rent. And you know, so it, it would work. We just have to prove it because yeah. the restaurant industry is just not banded together. But we're working on it. We're trying. And, and, you know, you're also in entertainment. And Dom, obviously, you make your living in entertainment, being a DP and working on projects and working on shows and whatnot. What is going on in that world in terms of the freelancers and the, the shooters and the sound guys that now basically are all out of cash? You know? <laughs> <laughs> we, we made that joke from snl to each other but yeah they're basically all out of they're all out of luck so what, what, what what's going on in your world i mean so like i'm a freelancer so you know i i go on for a job for for a month and i could be off for a month and then i could do another job for another two months and it's uh i mean everyone's out of work yeah there, i mean because if you think about it you can't practice social distancing on a film set right on top of each other and there's yeah. no, on a small crew you're talking about 10 people on a bigger crew you're talking about 150 people yeah um but you know all my production is shut down and i'm the type of person too that never believes i have a job until i'm on set sure enough yeah i have to, has, I have to say and anything can happen and here we are <laughs> happen, you know yeah first of worst um but uh, as far as all my production that i have lined up they're you know we don't know. I honestly think this is going to, you know, you know, it's all about bending the curve, as they say. Flattening, yeah. Mm -hmm. Opening businesses back up. But again, I think we're going to practice this new social distance thing for quite a while until. until yeah. Day. So I don't see the film industry picking up at least for another 10 to 12 months. And if, if, if I think there might be some kind of rule where you can't have more than you know, I think there is now you can't have, I mean, it went down from 50 to 10 to five. In a yeah. Game. So I, I don't see big productions coming up anytime soon, but uh, one of the biggest things that helped out for us was getting them law passed that freelancers are now able to get uh, unemployment because that yeah. was never. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So in, ca in case any of the people are watching that, they don't know that they are now eligible for the, for unemployment. Yeah. Um, however, filing in New York State is a pain in the ass, and what I'm, I'm learning this as I go, and I'm learning this today, and I learned a lot of stuff that you have to show. Basically, what you have to do is from 2018, 2019, is show your W-2s and your 1099s, and then get mm -hmm. an of that, and then get an average of 52 weeks, and then New York State will determine how you, how they pay you. But then you get that bonus 600 bucks that everyone else has gotten. Yeah, that's great. Claire, what about you? You're in Food TV, right? I mean, um, yeah, you, you, we're dark. you were doing a lot of stuff uh, with Food Network and whatnot. Is everything, all productions ceasing? Halted, halted. Food, uh, it's all dark right now. I'm, I'm calling it dark because there's no, um, I mean, you can only do so much preparation. I think there's a lot of shows ready to be shot. Um, uh, I was working on one myself. It's but all of them are dark at the moment, and there isn't really a, a planned time. You know, you you keep saying, okay, well, you know, the government's saying now April thirtieth. We all know there's no way that if you shut this, if we stay like socially distanced from April thirtieth, the month of April, we're gonna. I mean, New York is gonna be devastated. The numbers yeah. we're gonna produce are just insane and you know what's ahead and it's not it's bleak i mean if you listen to every medical professional especially in new york they're saying oh the worst isn't even come close so i think april 30th is way optimistic i think that restaurants we are we are you know looking at possibly september being shut down till september and i think that's more realistic yeah um, so i think for 
you know, production, which is crazy because this is the time more than ever we need to have more content because everybody's stuck in their houses. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. like, interactive content would be great. Like, yeah. but as you know, I had Corona. Um, <laughs> yeah. She had Dom. You didn't know. I, but she, I, know. She, I got the yeah. Rona roids. <laughs> What were some, walk us through it, because I, I feel like a lot, there's a lot of misinformation. I like talking to people who, who do experience it and, you know, it kind of calms down their nerves. I've, I know a few people who have it. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's not bad. It wasn't bad. It's compared to other people. It was like a mild flu or a really bad cold. There was, you know, two days of, of a higher fever. There was about seven days of a mild fever but that's it like you can function you, normally as a matter of fact anybody in that feeling like that would have gone to work yeah if called in sick like not that sick they would say get you you know get you behind to work right so that's kind of what it felt like the worst thing i think that is that i experienced is like you don't get you, you, my smell and taste which at that time i had it earlier on and they weren't saying that was a symptom. So I was freaking out that something was wrong with me. And, yeah. I, oh, and especially for life. you, that's whole like all about tasting, like not to be able to taste must have been insanity. It was insanity. It was, you could eat a lemon. I could bite into a lemon and not taste that it was a lemon. I mean, texturally, but it was just textures rolling around and no smell along with it. So, uh, but now that's, that's coming back. Not as strong as it was, but it's back. I'm, I'm pretty much, I mean, clear of it at this point, what I keep wanting to know. And I think the best thing in order for us to move forward in this would be like, we could get back to work. If you've had Corona, you get cleared of it. If ever, if more people could get tested and when they find out they have it and then get a second test to yeah. know that you're clear, then could we go back to work? And then it's all the cleared people going back to work. Or what does that do? You know, like, cause right now there's no system in place to get anybody moving again. Um, and I think there's so many people in New York city that have had it or in New York state or in New Jersey that have had it, but with the, because of the minimal testing. Um, however, I did learn you get an ant you're, if you've had it and you keep, you know, you're able to make it through, which for me, it was, as I said, it was just like a, a day and a half, almost two days of a higher fever where you just sleep a lot. I slept a lot for about a week, but it was just a mild fever for most of the time. And that's about it. Other than the taste and smell thing, that's all I experienced. I didn't have the crazy cough. So that other people were talking about, I didn't really feel winded because I was in my bed. So I was like, <laughs> anything. I was watching a lot of like, you know, TV, uh, yeah. all sorts, but um I, I, you told me I was with you maybe I don't know a couple of weeks ago when it all before it happened. You told me that I think I have the coronavirus, right? You were you were. <laughs> well, I was so worried. I was making you wear gloves. I was touching things carefully. I was washing hands. I had I had like ninety percent alcohol hand sanitizer. I did. I'm a germaphobe anyway, so I did all the things that were told to be done and yeah. extra precaution. I do think it is airborne. I think we're still learning about it. But the one thing is, it is a virus, and for a virus, once you've had it, you have an antibody that lives inside of you. So it's like a marker to show that you've had it and right. you have healed from it. Now, this sucker is a virus, which means it will most likely mutate. And you're not immune to the, to the mutation, but the antibody is an antibody. It's actually what we use in the vaccines for flu. So that's now out there. There's a lot of people like me that have had it. They've passed the 14 day point. I'm fully clear. I've had no symptoms or signs of it in long enough that maybe they could use my blood for something, but I can't even get the cleared test because there's not enough tests. Yeah, it's crazy. And, and back to the production thing, like, like you said, Dom, to just follow up with that, like, okay, even if it's a, let's just say April 30 becomes a reality, right? Productions can't go back to work April 30th or May 1st. It's not going to happen that way because, like you said, the crew sizes, the cast. What about interactions of, like, uh, you know, just shaking someone's hand or if there's a hug in the scene for actors and stuff like that? Like, how is it feasible that May 1st productions are going to jump back into it? I can't see it. I, I don't I don't see it. And, I, and to go back on what Claire said, I um, Mount Sinai is, is taking blood tests mm. samples for people who had it. So... Oh, 
okay, I'll go up there if they let, if they let me. I'm like right now, they're like this to me. Like nobody cover. <laughs> I tried to get a delivery and told them I had Corona, but I had been clear for seven days and they told me no. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I will say the one good thing that came out of this is this uh, contactless, no touch delivery, right? You just drop the food off and leave me out of it. <laughs> I think that's the best thing I ever ever yeah, yeah. That's always but yeah it's always like that here in new york it's like hey thank you bye yeah you tip some oh no now they're just leaving it they're just leaving it right in your doorstep oh are they wow no yeah. i gotta let them in i gotta buzz them in so all right yeah. so let's let's jump into some of the things that you guys have been watching now that we sort of covered uh how everybody's been affected by it i'm gonna start and i'm gonna say claire i have been watching five ingredient fix <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Now, the coolest thing about, and I want, and I'm going to let you talk about it, but the coolest thing about the new Food Network app on on the, the, the app on Apple TV that I have, wherever you have it, is that now a lot of the old shows that were missing for a long time are back on, you can see them at any time. So Five Ingredient Fix is on the app. It's fucking awesome. So why don't you tell me a little bit about making five ingredient fix and how you got into all of that initially? Oh man, five ingredient fix. So it's wild. So I signed the Food Network in 2008. I was shooting that in 2008. It aired, uh, the first air date, I will never forget, it's April 9th of 2009. It may have been earlier than that, but it was 2009, early 2009. The first show airs a five ingredient fix. It was a six show season or six show pilot season. And, and then I did it for five years and seven seasons as well. And over those years, I shot seven seasons of Food Network Challenge that I hosted, tons of best thing I ever ate. I mean, there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shows. Five ingredient fix is such a wild story because um, I used to get the question, like, where did the number five come from? I was going to ask you, yeah. How yeah. did they come up with five ingredients? Yeah. They came up with five ingredients. And okay. the funny thing is, I was offered the chance to, to take, like, they were like, five ingredients, but, you know, your your oil that you're using doesn't have to count. And there were all these things they were trying to give me. And they said, but do you think you could do it? The reason they chose me for it is because I already had a food philosophy as a few ingredient cooking. So that was already who I was. I just had never put a number to it and didn't love the idea of like shoving a number down anybody's throat. But right. um, so I said, well, let me think about it. So I, I read uh, who I later worked with and somebody I admire immensely, Jamie Oliver, I read one of his recipes and it had like 39 ingredients <laughs> and I read it and I mean, I know food, right? So I read the, the recipe, I, I, I read the whole recipe, not just the ingredients. So I knew, and I know it was a mole, it was something that, but it had a lot of ingredients. I generally know how to make a mole, but I tried to go to the store without anything written down and just reading it right before I left, I got to the store and I have a pretty amazing memory and I could only remember five by counting on my fingers. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Four or five. And then after that, I was like, there was this, there was this. I started, you know, questioning after the five. And I realized five ingredients is this solid number that anybody can remember when they go to the store. Um, and then I started playing around with recipes that were five ingredients. And then what was incredible was when I was testing recipes, I would feed people like my doorman or my friends. <laughs> And I would say, all right, tell me the five ingredients. And if they couldn't list them all, then I knew that I wasted an ingredient. So instead of using, that's why I chose not to take the oil for free because I was you like- You did, hey, right. Yeah, you were telling yeah. me that. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. I was like, you can, you know, I, I, water was free because everybody's got water and it's not really a flavor. Uh, salt and pepper, I were the, my only freebies were salt and pepper. But um and because I thought that's in everybody's yeah, it has to be always yeah. Use both. yeah but yeah so it was really weird I, I would go um I would if they couldn't taste all five then I was like all right well I used you know canola oil that's a waste I can use I can render bacon the bacon that's in it and use the fat of the bacon and then I can add another ingredient so the test was like can you taste all five I also used to have people tell me that um they would like they would make something like my green goddess rice and it was heavy basil in it which is like it's like a basil green goddess yeah thing that's then you you know with avocado and then you mix it you're with making me hungry i haven't eaten at a restaurant in 
a fucking month. It's so easy, dude. You can make it. It's so simple. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. These are simple, but they, um, and somebody, I remember once the first time I was like out in public and somebody came over to me and said, you're the five ingredient girl. I made your green goddess rice and I really didn't like it. And I was yeah. like, gosh, man, I'm sorry. What did you not like about it? And she said, well, there was a lot of basil in it and I don't like basil. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. But with five <laughs> ingredients, you're right. like, try something else. You like mint, swap it for mint. Like that's the whole fun part about it is then I realized that people don't take, like they don't play with recipes. So right. I wanted them to play a little more. So I actually got into that show. Um, anyway. oh, it's, it's an amazing show. I mean, like you, you, you guys, first of all, if you're going to stream anything food wise, look, p- listen, people are stuck inside their houses now and they need to make things right. And some people are very equipped at making food, but some of them are going to need some instruction. So let's throw back to these old shows. I right. The and two hot ladies, that was one of my favorites. Um, because, you know, right now, Food Network doesn't have a lot of content that's uh, learn how to make it. It's a lot of competition and stuff, and that doesn't always help, right? So um, it's go. great entertainment for sure. But it's your show. You poached a steak one time with Bobby, right? That must have been. I yeah. poached a steak, and I swear, I thought he might. Oh, he looks like he wants to. Die and roll over in his grave because he was like, you're poaching a fillet yeah he looked like like he didn't he didn't believe it <laughs> yeah. no because i was even like i i thought of the idea because there's a place in knoxville tennessee that used to deep fry steak in clarified mm. butter and then put it on the grill and it was so good <laughs> and i thought okay i can't tell people to do that because right yeah one that might be a little dangerous we'll have like people catching stuff on fire like they do the fried turkey but it would, I was like, it's also like a heart attack on a plate. But right. I thought, well, you know, I can play with this and figure it out. So I had this idea to poach a filet in port wine and it turned out phenomenal. And then I was able to like reduce it down with butter and make a sauce. And and it looked a little gray because I was like, it's not the prettiest looking steak, but it was so juicy. He liked it. I remember Bobby liked it. Yeah. He loved it. He, but he would not, I don't know. I was so shocked because I thought for sure just out of the mere principle of me like poaching a filet, he was going to say, yeah, it tastes good, but nobody should do this. Um, he <laughs> really <laughs> thought that was going to be the response. I had no idea because, you know, Bobby yeah. is not going to be a second take. It's going to be. I love, I, you told me, take. you told me uh, once that he would always kind of bust you. And I'm sure he's not the only one like, Okay, that's one, that's two, that's three. That's what with the number of ingredients that you were using, <laughs> yeah. Thousand percent. I mean, every chef gave me a lot of slack for like, what what number of ingredient is that? <laughs> oh man, that's five ingredients. You know what would be really good? Like if you added some chili, but you don't have another ingredient. That's a bummer, Claire. Too bad, you were almost a great chef. And I'm like, <laughs> the greatest thing about it is people can add what they want. Yeah, so over the next week, as I keep watching that show, prepare for some more texts of you doing various things. <laughs> Definitely shoot, shoot me the text. Man, if you would make one, I would like. Oh, I'm going to do it now. Now I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make one. If you make one, then I'll do something for you. It'll be like a challenge. Okay. I challenge you to make any five ingredients. Jeez, this, everything turns eat. into a competition with you Food Network people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm all in. And I've been watching Boy Meets Grill like it's Breaking Bad. You know what I mean? I've watched yeah. it season one, two, three, four. You know what I mean? Good. I miss Good. I miss that show so much. Like that's where everybody fell in love with Bobby Flay, you know, just going to the store and picking out meat and picking out fish and talking to the people and then going up on his porch or his, his uh, balcony or wherever it was and making those dishes. I mean, to me, Emerald's show was a, a, it's not on there but but Bobby's is and it's it's a classic so if you're looking for some classic food tv that's where I'm starting check out the food network app because it's it's fucking awesome and they're and every I'm pretty much everything besides like Emerald is up there yeah well Emerald doesn't own Emerald anymore yeah I figured it was some licensing thing plus dot the music that he used to play and stuff like that I, fi- I felt like there had to be some sort of some licensing yeah. stuff Martha bought it remember yeah so yeah all right go ahead dom what do you got in terms of film 
I'm sure there's a movie or something. You're going to take well, us out of food. The whole first week of quarantine, I turned on every pandemic movie I could find. Brutal. <laughs> 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 just, just to stay on point, yeah. I mean, let's just get my, let's get it out there. Let's, let me just see what's going to possibly happen. And, um, and I just wanted to see what, what these movies got right. Yeah. And uh, I did um, from, I think it was in the 90s, it was Outbreak. I love Outbreak. Yeah, Outbreak is Dustin Hoffman, Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, right? No, not Samuel, J- uh, Morgan Freeman. Morgan. Okay, all right. Morgan Freeman, yeah, and I forget who's the other one. Oh, uh, Kevin Spacey, which we don't really talk about anymore. Or Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> or- I love them both. Who cares? Yeah, I love them both. As actors, they're phenomenal. Yeah. Claire and I have a thing on that, but we won't get into all that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe for not on facebook live i'd love to do no it. yeah right exactly yeah um but uh, i did watch one thing that really it's really close to home right now with all this happening is uh contagion mm. i have not seen that have you seen that claire no but i saw it on my netflix like Same. lineup and i was like no it's I'm funny how this... I don't... is it really good it's it's it predicts so much it gets it it, it from from start to finish i mean the virus in that story is much worse than this virus mm-hmm. um, because it is an outbreak. It isn't a virus that starts from a bat. Um, That's crazy. How, wild, how, how fast and wild it could spread. And you don't even think about it. Yeah. It starts from a bat guano. So in, in, <laughs> in a contagion, it starts from a bat and then it got, if you want me to spoil it. Yeah, spoil it. Yeah, no, keep like, let us know what's up. Yeah. It's really happened. It started from a bat and the bat in, you know, you learn in the story, the progression towards the end, the bat was eating a piece of fruit, went to like a pig farm, dropped the piece of fruit from his mouth, the pig saw the fruit, the pig ate the fruit, and then the pig got picked up by a butcher, brought to a restaurant, and so on and so forth. Wow. wow. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm gonna I'm definitely that's on my list of things to watch. Um it's a hard watch because it's 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 close to real. Close to to real but you know it kind of broke me out of the bubble of what's actually happening I'm like okay this is where we're at and this is you know this is how they, they handle things there is another doc on there called pandemic did that come out before this i don't know or is that, that re- the same? no that came out before this that's crazy did that you see out, that right? no yeah. i started watching the first episode this is months ago i started watching i guess um but no i haven't I'm going to give that one a go, too. It's funny how... I the pandemic shows, though. Don't they freak you out? So I'm, I'm with you on that, Claire. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. Like, I don't want, almost don't want to watch. I Last oh, night, rented um, What About Bob from the 80s with Bill that? Murray. Have you ever seen that? Oh, what's what's that? What's that? that? Famous psychologist? Yeah. Yeah, with Richard Dreyfuss <laughs> and Bill Murray. And Bill Murray is uh, crazy, I guess. You know, and he he keeps going to visit the psychologist and he goes up to New Hampshire and just like harasses him. Baby steps to the bus. <laughs> Kill the fish. Amazing. Baby steps <laughs> on the bus. And then he calls the, the hotline and he's like, oh, Bob. Oh. <laughs> Bob committed suicide. I'm going to need that address. It's so good. Such a brilliant Bill Murray movie. I feel like underrated too. A lot of people haven't seen yeah. it. No, I've seen that years ago. I love that movie. Yeah, Murray's great in that. What about you, Claire? What have you been What have you been binging? Give me our, your first round here. Oh, I got a long round. Uh, new stuff, self-made, easy. It's only four shows, great. Um, it's about the first African-American woman who was a millionaire, multi-millionaire, actually. Self-made, came from nothing, and then turned herself into that. Is that a documentary, or is that a, like a narrative show? It's a, it's, a, it's a scripted show based on a true story. Um, That's cool. And really good. So it's only four episodes. It's a limited series. Um, another limited series, Unorthodox. Really good. Uh, again, that one is four parts as well. That's about, um, a, it's based off another true story. It's this woman that was living in Williamsburg and then like escapes the Hasidic Jewish community and this wild journey she goes on. Um, huh. But it's only four shows. And each of these are like, four 45 to 55 minute shows. So those are two good binge bingeable shows. I'm really loving on Hulu, although Hulu people, if you listen to this, Hulu people, 
Stop doing the weekly release. It is not 1999 <laughs> for a sitcom to come out every Wednesday because you so annoying that and you're just making me angry. And I stopped trying to find new shows on on Hulu. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. But Apple TV did that <laughs> shit too. Yes, with morning show, which is so yeah. Funny. I just just put the show on. Just put it on. Yes. But they've got another one, Little Fires. Little Fires Everywhere. Really good Reese Witherspoon. That's the one I'm watching, but annoyed because it only comes out once a week. HBO can get away with it. Hulu, you cannot get away with it. No, you can't. Listen, HBO does Curb Your Enthusiasm every week. I'm down. You know what I'm I mean? Down. And I'm down it's with- not uh, bingeable, you know? New Five, watch that one. So good. Obviously, Ozarks 3 is out. I love it. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen two uh, or three. I said the first oh, season. There's so many. There's so many. Um, there's also the new one that's on HBO on Monday nights tonight, probably airing right now. The the one about um, if Lindbergh won, what's it called? It's like the something, the post of America. Oh, I'm going to have to look it up. Yeah, that's okay. It's so uh, good. Um, what about you, Dominique? Any other shows like that? Um, I rewatched You. Oh. No, You is great. Yeah, yeah. But I watched it from season one and two straight up. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, you know, does that season. make you want a date ever? When the first that first episode came out, I'm like, all right, this is a chick chick series. All right, I'm not <laughs> yeah. the first episode, I'm like, I'm instantly hooked. And then he texts me and he was like, You gotta check out this show, you. And when Dom, listen, Dom is an incredible uh DP, as you know. So if he recommends if he recommends something, I'm like, oh art artistically, it's gonna be beautiful, it's gonna have a lot of stuff. And then it's like some show about a dating scenario i was like what the fuck but i was i was so hooked and gripped on on that show for but both seasons yeah it's not a dating scenario it's about a site like a psycho serial killer which right. is, makes it so good that's the difference yeah that's but at first i didn't know that i was like oh this guy's looking to date this girl it's gonna be i don't want to i don't want nine episodes of this shit and then and then a lifetime for the first season Somebody said that to me. Yeah, my sister kept saying, "I read the book. I read the book," and I was like, "I, I, I don't, I don't care." <laughs> I she always that. said that to me. I, I was, she'd be like, "Well, I, re I actually read the second book too," and I'd be like, "Yeah, but I am still watching season one. I don't know what that means. Keep it to yourself, please." Yeah. <laughs> okay, I got a question. Oh, by the way, the plot against America—that's the new one. Okay. That I'm also watching. All right. I got a question. So what, how about, so I've been rewatching old movies too, Peter, because I think you and I have this like crazy, you too, Dominic, like the, the nostalgia thing. We're like, oh, I huge. love like, 80s movies and early 90s, like Better Off Dead and Cat, like, I mean, obviously, what about Bob? I yeah. Long list. Raising Arizona, Caddyshack, you go through them. I can go I've, been, I've been doing a bunch of those and I'll throw some of those out there as well, but go ahead. But what are, name your favorite, because I went through this like, in my mind when you said, let's talk about our favorite things we're watching. So I actually watched this today. What are your favorite movies that were better than the book? Mm. I have one. Mine Go is Good Night in the Garden of Good and Evil. Let's talk about some Kevin Spacey, John Cusack. That was like the most amazing film and better than, well, the book was really good, but in my opinion, better than the book. Um, I don't read that much. <laughs> <laughs> Comics count? No. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. I preferred Watchmen over the comic book. Sweet, I loved it. That's I loved a... Watchmen too. That was good. I feel I like it worked, it worked better. A giant octopus in a movie would have not felt right for that universe. I felt so. It was so grounded the way he did it. I'm gonna say, I love the book. This is stupid, but I love the book Death of a Salesman. Right? Yeah. Okay, but. Dustin Hoffman, who is coming up a lot now on our show, so the three of us are going to get X marks over us. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, we're in a pandemic. It's fair game at this point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's still, you know, what are you going to do? He's an actor. But he has a version of uh, Death of a Salesman that I saw back in school that I thought was phenomenal. And, I, and I've gone back and watched it a couple times since. I think it's, uh, I think it's probably, I don't know if it's better than the book, but uh, it's, it's a very great version of that. Have you ever seen that? No, no but I'm going to watch it. I've never seen that. I'm totally going to watch that. Yeah, I mean, he's so good in it. I mean, Dustin Hoffman is so good in everything. I rewatched uh, the other night Tootsie. Yeah, Tootsie. You said, because you said Dustin Hoffman, that's the first thing I always think of when I think everybody. of Dustin Hoffman is Tootsie. 
um, Stand By Me, better than the short story Stephen King wrote. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Body, that was the name of the short story. Stan Stephen King movies, I've been watching a lot of those lately because they're not that scary anymore. The world is way scarier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is no horror anymore than having to be stuck in your house for 45 days plus. Yeah. Now I don't mind watching them by myself in my pitch black apartment because I'm just hearing sirens of ambulances running by outside. I'm like, eh, let's scare myself inside the house. It'll be a lot easier. <laughs> but I was I was thumbing through Hulu and for those people that are into like the making a murderer kind of thing, there was a Hulu, I think that was probably originally on A&E, Lacey, was it Lacey Peterson's death? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lacey Peterson, yeah, the one from Colorado? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and, and Scott Peterson, the, the yeah. husband, yeah. So there's a whole like six part docuseries on her death and disappearance and the media coverage of that. I love those shows, but I feel like it's, I feel like it's such a, you know, I feel like all of them are the same episode, essentially every, like every case is just slightly tweaked, but it's all like, she's dead. And now we had the media and this is what happened, you know, like. To totally. I've got, okay. This is off, off subject. I've got a question for both of you. Do you think this is what I, I keep getting alerts on, you know, you get the news alerts on your phone and I got some really random ones like, you know, you know, crazy weird murders that have happened and stuff that has nothing to do with the coronavirus. And oddly, I've overlooked them and they've not really been on the Same. news because you can't waste news time with like the psycho murder that just happened. And I'm thinking, how much is, are people getting away with right now? Yeah. Do oh, totally. Oh, did you hear what happened in, in Queens? This is like maybe 10 minutes for me. They released a lot of inmates from Rikers because the virus was spreading. And this one dude, and not to get so graphic, came back home, murdered his uh, his son and his mother. Wow. Not covered, though, because the new media is like coronavirus, 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 coronavirus. But the reason why he was yeah. was because of the coronavirus. Yeah. Wow. So that was a good tie-in for the news, by the way, <laughs> that they can yeah, still so do another it. coronavirus story just in case we haven't had enough of them. Yeah. Also, I find Andrew Cuomo's show um, every morning to be very entertaining and interesting. <laughs> you know, like these pre the press conferences that these guys are giving every day, you know. Oh, oh, when he does the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I call it their shows, yeah. He gives me, he calms me down a lot when I watch him. I agree, yeah. I feel, I feel safe, you know. Opposite for others. <laughs> I'm, oh, loving, totally. I'm loving some Cuomo. I like it because he's like he's like totally New York. He likes like interrupts people. That's it. You know, it's great. And he also goes off on these tangents. I was me and Dom share a lot of text messages where like he told just talk about something that's just out of the blue. You know, like my daughter. So I, I haven't seen my daughter in weeks. You know, I can't hug her. Like he's just on a whole thing. And then he comes back to earth and he's like, oh, but the virus, you know, that's always entertaining to me. But it makes you feel like he's real. Totally. And, you know, by the way, but if, if one of you or if not both of you are not writing this movie right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've definitely got a I definitely got my own uh, thing I've been writing. Anyway, With Cuomo as the one of the lead, like, you know, he's going to be like the president in the movie because you can't just, nobody cares about Trump. We just make, <laughs> let's just make, but, let's make I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to get into all thing here and we'll, we'll, we'll move, but he, you know, I, I tune him out normally, but because of the virus, I have to watch him now on a, on a daily basis. And some of his stuff is so silly that it, it just makes you giggle. You know what I mean? Like, uh, don't be a cutie pie. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's so outrageously stupid, but it just entertains the fuck out of me. Maybe I've just been in my house for too long. Who knows? <laughs> I, I think, though, with Cuomo, it's like we need a leader, someone who can yeah. go into battle and we can feel comfortable with. And he leads with facts and he gives it to you straight, but he gives you some, you know, comfort and some, you know, acknowledgement that we, we got this, but it's going to be a while. Whether with Trump, you're just like, hey, this is this has to be a TV show. <laughs> it is a TV show. It's called The Apprentice Afterlife. Totally. This is the Apprentice sequel. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, another one to watch is The Apprentice. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> no, but I will say the, the season that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger did was not that great. 
of The Apprentice. I did watch all of Trump's Apprentice seasons. The Celebrity Apprentice was was a was a great show at the time. You know, he raised a lot of money for a lot of great charities, and so and I was and it was tremendous. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Listen, you, you're so PC right now. I can't. I, know. I can't bring myself to do it. I mean, he, he rattles in my head. I can't do it. Well, I'm with you. He's 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 a disaster. So I don't. I don't. I, you know, I agree with you. I do. I do uh, think that he missed his opportunity to flip the table and show us that. Okay, can you? If you can fucking lead, be a leader like Cuomo can, or just yeah. in general, you, you can flip a lot of tables. But I think he failed. Well, the thing about it too is like when you see a leader. Right. Most people haven't identified a leader in a long time because they got warped into this whole thing. But when you see a leader like Cuomo, and it reminds you, know. you of what a leader fucking looks like. And even and, and for, by the by the same token to Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders, who I'm not going to say anything about, but like, wake up, because that's what a leader looks like. Not this bullshit that you that you're peddling on a new candidate on our hands i was like how do like we can't do shit like that like okay we're all not going back to work unless cuomo is running for (laughs) how do we change we're gonna continue the protest uh okay let's get back to some other things food world by the way we all dom and i love uh john favaro's chef's what is it the chef show yeah i love that i love i love him he's a queen's boy yeah. yeah, I like him too. I like him too. I like that. Um, I don't find the show. I mean, for me, maybe it's just because I know a lot. I know the chefs that he's working with, and I know that I like that he's taking it from the approach of like I'm fascinated by this and I want to learn. And I think that it's probably more interesting to somebody other than me. Right, <laughs> for sure. I don't care that much about the celebrity he's hanging out with, and I care. And the from the food angle, it's interesting, but it's more being taught specifically to John, and that works great for John. And I think yeah, I, that- I, I do agree with you. That's my one criticism of the show. I feel like I why John, you know? Well, and I think he's playing the everyman. I get where yeah, it's totally. Going from. I just don't find it as interesting. What do you think of Ugly Delicious? Fuck. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that show at all. What is- not a, what's the other one that was so big on Netflix? The the what's John eating or something like that? I haven't seen that. But the the, the David Chang shows don't like. I I think he's he must be wonderful. I guess. But I I, I and I love his restaurants. So I'm not going to diss it. But i don't need to see him eating pizza hut and claiming that it's better than regular pizza you know what i mean like just a little secret i named david chang's um his pork bun at momofuku as one of the best things i ever ate on one of the shows i tried to name it then just be careful just just, just so you're aware we're live i know (laughs) okay (laughs) because i know where you're going i know you've told me this and i know where you're going so you're and uh, and he i couldn't shoot it i was told that we were told no yeah. So, was it, yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh I don't care. I'm being honest. No, I know. Yeah. And I and I and I by the way, I agree with that assessment about that place, but you know, then you told me skipping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just think it's when you when you're when uh I, I think most cooks and chefs what we're looking for, which he's not, which is one of the things I think that probably makes the shows really great is that he is who he is in true form you know he's unapologetically so himself and i think that's a great quality to have is some sort of a genuine true quality um i love that you know i love yeah. genuine i i, I, I agree with that for him yeah. on camera then maybe in <laughs> other forms of life totally <laughs> Uh, but, but I don't really love the show either, though. <laughs> well, then, no, well, this is about what you're supposed to watch. Nah, yeah. I wouldn't waste your time on Ugly Delicious. <laughs> All right, how about this? Space shows. I'm addicted to how the uni- universe works. I have not seen that. What's that, Netflix? Is that a sci-fi? Yeah, well, it's not sci-fi. It's like a, like, like a document, not really a documentary. It's a series that's on, I think it's on Science Channel. I I buy it on Amazon. Yeah. Okay. I'll 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 give that a look. I'm sure it's uh, no. It's it is on it's on Science Channel. I just remember because I was like, where where am I? Because on Amazon, 
you can like buy the season. So since I don't have regular cable and I just like buy through all of my like Amazon Prime and Netflix and Hulu and Apple TV and all that. But the, it's uh, the it's, good news is in 2021 or 22, every show that we watch will be centered around the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> you think anybody wants to relive that? Because I'm trying totally. to think what we should do is make a cartoon that's the comedy, like comedic version, or you know, like we got to start laughing because right now all I want to watch are comedies. I, I well, for me, yeah, and that's why I threw on Tootsie and What About Bob because I just wanted to throw back to the things that like I always used, to, I always laugh at and love, you know, so. Uh, I, I shows where a meteor is going to kill the earth and I'm not so worried about the pandemic anymore. There's like an asteroid coming. So forget the pandemic. It's going to clear it all up. Claire, did you see the show on Showtime from a few, few years ago? And they just finished the last season. Uh, either of you guys have seen this. The Affair. Yeah, so good. So good. To me, Dom, if you like you, I think The Affair, season one anyway, and two, I think are really good. Three, meh. For Dominic, you haven't seen the affair. You're gonna love it. Yeah, it's got it's got a lot of twists and turns in it, and I'm not gonna spoil it for you at all. But I feel like that's one of those shows that maybe people missed because for whatever reason it's Showtime and they don't have it. Showtime. But yeah, but give I think you can get it on on the other thing. Free trial. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, give that give the affair a thing. A friend of mine is watching it now that I recommended it to, and she just can't stop watching it. So nothing to do for a month. So. Well, yeah. you're you're gonna crush the Why affair, it? yeah. Um, um, there's also another one I think on Showtime that's uh, I'll double check. It's on Showtime and it's about a restaurant worker. You know what I'm talking about? No, what's oh, that? No, I think that might be Stars. No. Wait, somebody told me about this. My cousin told me so about good. this, and she's, they're uh, obsessed with it. What is it? It's so good. I just have to look up the name of it. I'm kind of bad with names. Same, yeah. Well, Claire turned me on to Schitt's Creek. I'd never seen an episode oh, of that. Oh, good. Yeah, I'd never seen an episode of that. That was That's amazing. That first season is so far so good, yeah. We're only on season one. Oh, binge, Sorry. binge, binge, baby, binge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start binging that ASAP. Yeah, that, that makes you laugh. Okay, here we go. It's called Sweet Bitter. It's on Stars. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that down, actually. Sweet, Sweet bitter. bitter. And I will tell you this. I love it from, there is an accuracy to this. They, they obviously have some really great chef that is probably giving them, uh, like, guidelines or giving them, you know, an overall view. Advice, of yeah. Restaurant works. And it's because it shows. It's just, it's great. Yeah, my cousin told me about that a while ago, and I meant to dig in, but I, I didn't get an opportunity to. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Hey, let's talk about some of the movies uh, that were Oscar nominated, perhaps. And uh, they're, they're all available to watch now. I didn't see Parasite. I haven't seen Parasite yet. I did. Awesome. Of course you did. Gotta read, though. Gotta read. <laughs> See, okay, I that's been I think Domino's fear yeah, is I can't I love looking at visuals. So to look at subtitles and to look back up would be very distracting for me. Yeah, same. But but to that credit, you know, a movie is very visual and you shouldn't you could watch it muted and still understand what's going on. So um we, we, I think you would like it because visually it's still very good. And as a matter of fact, I watched it twice for that reason because I it, I was missing so much of that. And I could, when I would glance, kind of see what was happening, um, it looked so cool that I had to watch it again, knowing the storyline. And I actually was able to follow it without reading at all the second time. Okay. So you learned a new language, perhaps. <laughs> That's Nick Mandarin. <laughs> I mean, I wanted to, I wanted to watch it, but I just have that fear that Dom does that. Like, I'm just gonna be like, what? what, what, what watch what, it, what, it's what, good, it's a bombshell. Okay, let's go to The Irishman. I watched it like maybe 10 times. Yeah. Really? Did you like it? I loved it. I love Scorsese. I love He's my favorite. Martin Scorsese is, is God, you know? <laughs> He's intriguing me so much. And He's amazing. It's good. I didn't love it as much. It was slow. And the we what's up with the clay looking people? Why did they look like that? Clay. They I think look like, like a Ken doll. Like their faces. I know what she means. Uh, that's because of the. Um, Agent CGI that they had. Yeah. And in some parts, it was not so good as other parts. I think when mostly the dark lit moody scenes that you can't really tell. 
Right. I think he actually looked the best not young for some reason. But Robert, Robert De Niro did not look good in his eyes, man. They gave him blue eyes and you just triggered in your brain, phony. Like <laughs> yeah. right. I I've watched Robert De Niro for for years. Everyone has. I have fucking green eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we need that? Right. But Goodfellas is on Netflix now, so you can you can Oh good. Yes, yeah, one of my faves. Watched that shot two blocks from my house. What's that? Bronx Tales. Oh, Bronx Tales is on there too. Yes, a good friend of ours. Yes, isn't that? Yeah. Chaz. Chaz has restaurants too. I love him. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh what about this uh, the Joker? Joker. Uh, that's favorite movie. I still have the background on my computer. Yeah, That's I think that for yeah. me that was movie of the year. Yeah, I agree. I thought yeah. it was really, really good. I don't know if it was the best picture because I haven't seen Parasite yet. Sure. And I think for me, Joker and Irishman come really close together. But definitely for me, my favorite movie of the year. I mean, just the artistry, the the look and feel of the film. I think the character Joaquin Phoenix is amazing. So. I, also I think Joker's better than Irishman. It, it's it's a tough one. That's a tough one. <laughs> I thought both were kind of slow. I loved them both. I thought Joker was better than Irishman as well. But Parasite, I'm telling you. Really? I, I mean, how wow, people that, that sees this, wow. says this okay. shit? Fuck, man. Dumb. We and I know, and I hate reading too, by the way. I hate, I hate it. it. I can't read. I don't, I mean, I can read, but I'm like, I can't. love it, but no, no, no. It's so good. It's so good. Watch it. I heard that Joker and Parasite deal with similar issues with classism. Yeah. But I think- I'm not giving away- Yeah, no, no. Claire's like, I'm not doing that shit. Yeah. Um, uh, what's the other one that I wanted to mention? Oh, another great one. Marriage Story. On yes, Netflix. I watched that. that is messed up. Yeah, I teared yeah. up. I teared up in that one. Yeah, I lost my shit on that one. I wasn't an Adam Driver fan until I saw his performance in that in his apartment. And yeah, that that is a powerful film. Yeah. But isn't that based on a true story that was written? Yeah, that's what makes it even better. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, the writers, the writer, I think, I think experienced some of that in his life. Yeah. I also uh, think market was pretty good because the the trailer was the first two minutes of the movie and if you watch the first two minutes of the movie i'm not spoiling anything it's the trailer but you think it's a happy-go-lucky marriage movie totally and then it turns into after the first two minutes then it's a totally different movie yeah it gets really interesting though i i i've talked to a few people that have gone through similar experiences that said that it it struck a chord with them because of uh, the content and what they had gone through in their in their situations. I was just this um this this wedding DJ that I had on was talking about. He went through a painful divorce, and it kind of reminded him of a little bit of that. Yeah, and he just was touched by it. Yeah, every divorce is is painful, or but it always can make for. I I would have I liked a marriage story. I would have liked a little more comedic relief in it. Maybe for sure. I, my divorce was pretty brutal. I could make mine still sound pretty funny. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would like it to be like a, l- a little more levity, but I think that it was approached in the most realistic way because it is it's what you feel while you're going, no matter what your situation is or how the divorce or why the divorce you go through a lot of those same back and forth you know emotions and emotions and i thought it was really good the marriage story was good i wasn't blown away though by the overall list joker was phenomenal but don't you think that we've had better movie lists in the past and the other point i wanted to make have you noticed that you can buy every movie that was that would be in theaters right now brand new and that would be coming out that you can get them on itunes or on amazon i saw that yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. there's no movie theaters no. right now <laughs> you know movie no, theaters are like what do you want us to do yeah. <laughs> you know, these movies have to make money and they were already planning the launches and movies are scheduled you know three like three years out you know what's coming out like if you yeah want. i mean i feel bad for any movie that was it's so funny though because my friend had a theory years ago he he owned a video game shop and uh he saw a decline in his business as soon as the streaming service, as far as video games started coming out, where you can download a game. So I go to the video game store and go online when you can download it the night of and play it the morning, right? So he, he kind of saw that 
coming from his business and he kind of like bailed out and he kind of predicted movies are going to be that way. I mean, some people enjoy going to the movies. I enjoy watching a movie with a crowd, but there's sometimes I enjoy watching a movie at home. And what he predicted was, and it's so fascinating that it kind of happened because of the pandemic was that movies are going to come out and you're going to be able to stream it or you're going to be able to go to the movie theaters. Yeah, I could see that happening. Yeah. Well, I will say- I think that this might be a new normal. Yeah. Oh, I think there's going to be a few things out of this are, that are new normal. First of all, the uh, no contact delivery. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think we're all going to be like, wait, no, we don't want to go back to meeting anybody. <laughs> and uh, the other one is the uh, some of the restaurant industry has got to change because I feel like a thousand uh, percent it's changing. Uh, like it, it's going to- I, I had uh, a chef on last night. And he was talking about. Uh, the camaraderie that's sort of forming between chefs now, whereas maybe like you said, a couple of them hadn't talked prior to, and now, and now a community outreach is formed in which they're supporting each other. So how do you go back from that, right? How do you go back from looking out after somebody and then not and worrying about your own shit? So I think that might be another good thing that comes out of it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think the movie thing though, too, that I agree that it, that's, I've never seen, like, there's always been that mandatory wait. Like, you know, if the movie wasn't so good, it might be released early and you can buy it on iTunes for $20 or something. But there's always been that waiting period where you still had to get to the theater if you wanted to see it the first right, yeah. the first week or two. And this is wild to, like, not have that waiting period. But there's some movies, too, like the Rotten Tomatoes, like, scoring system where you have to... You know, it's like, is this movie theater worthy? And they give it the popcorn rating. It's like the tomato rating and then the popcorn. Like, do you go see it in the theater? Like Knives Out, for example. Oh, I, yeah. You know, great in the theater. I watched it again and it was it was good on my TV, but nothing like it was in the theater. It was better. And what's the other one that's, oh, the, my favorite movie I've seen in the past year. I want a lot, I want a lot, one favorite movie of the past like six months. So mine, and I need to think of the name. It's the one that's like the new, like, um, you know, oh, the hotel, I'm back, Johnny, Johnny's, oh, come on. I don't know. Oh, um, the, the, the Shining prequel. Yes, The Shining, the, 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 pre, the prequel to The Shining, no, sequel. What, what is that called? I'm going to tell you right now, the sequel to The Shining. That's what I was trying to remember. Really, really good, actually. What would I see from the, I, I would have picked Knives Out, by the way. That's what I would have picked. You Knives have to go Out was see. great. This was the best movie I've Knives seen. Was great. I watched it a second time. I, I, well, I, I enjoyed it the first time a lot better. Yeah, well, I probably, yeah. But I mean, but it, because you know now what's happening. But like the first time that you see Knives Out, you don't know all the twists. Have you seen it? Yeah, right. Yeah, you don't know all the twists and turns. Doctor Sleep. Which what, what was that? Doctor Sleep. Doctor That's Sleep. the yeah. best movie I've seen in the past six months. You know that movie didn't get a lot of. It was under. Totally. It was great. It was underrated because people don't expect sequels from a great horror movie to be as good. It's so good though. With you and McGregor's amazing yeah. in it. The the way they approach the storyline, the whole, like, I learned a lot more about The Shining. It was so good. I went back and watched The Shining. Nice. It's All right. We're, we're almost wrapping up here, guys. So let me, let me, uh, let me, I'm going to call you out. Now you said what the, what was the one that you said, just said? Dr. Sleep. Dr. Sleep. Dom, what do you got? You have to go see it tonight. If somebody's watching this or, or rent it, oh, you can't go see anything. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would say The Invisible Man if you like monster movies because that's Universal's uh, line of monster movies that are starting out. They're rebooting the monster series. They tried with The Mummy with Tom, with Tom Cruise didn't work out and they're restarting with this. And if you're going to see that, you got to see Upgrade because it's from the same director and uh, it feels like a really great independent film but it's on a Hollywood budget. I'm going to select Knives Out if you have not seen it. If, you've, if you're seeing it for a second time, don't. But uh, and also, uh, I thought Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was great. This this uh, I could I feel like I'm hanging out with Brad Pitt in that movie. So I'm yeah, so good. I'll turn that movie on. I feel like I'm hanging out with Brad. Pitt. And I didn't want to see it to be honest with you. I was like, I, I forced you. Yeah, I you did force me, and I and I was like, I'm really happy that. Uh, that I got to see it. So anyway, thank you both for doing this. Listen, guys, I've been doing this little thing every day on Facebook where I Love give it. some gratitude to the people that are doing these uh, shows. So I'm going to say a little something nice about each one of you. I hope you can take it. Um, for Dom, I just appreciate so much how much I've learned from you and grow from you. Uh, and I appreciate our brotherhood. We're like brothers and we're 
not, but we are. And uh, I just appreciate everything that you've done for me. And uh, you're, you're a great dude. And for Claire, I appreciate uh, your positivity and your guidance. And uh, you're always there at a drop of a dime, no matter what's up. So, uh, and I appreciate Five Ingredient Fix. I loved it. So, <laughs> well, I appreciate you and all, all that you do. I think you're an incredible talent. Thank you so much, guys. So, thanks for doing this. And uh, maybe I'll see you guys again doing another one of these with me at some point. Yay. All right, cool. Later, guys. Very soon. Bye.